today on Speak the Word Ministries Word TV. It takes the love of God. I have to start speaking in tongues. I mean, just when I'm there, one of them 25 messages that Pastor preaches come to my head, and all of a sudden I start thinking, I need to calm down because right behind you may be a Speak the Word member. You never know who's standing right behind you or who's right in the store and you don't see them, but they see you. So I have to remember my love walk during these situations. Our Heavenly Father wants His children to walk in obedience to Him, living devoted and consecrated lives based on His written word, the Bible. We must be holy in our homes, at our jobs, in our cars, and on our telephones. No matter how insignificant the situations and or circumstances might seem, we must always conduct ourselves in a manner that gives God glory. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you and me shall be able to prosper. It did not say it would not be formed. It just said, it would not prosper. No, no. No weapon for our dog is me. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Let's join Pastor Terry Skeppel in the first half of this message as he ministers on What's Love Got to Do With It? You know, Pastor has been dealing with the topic for the last, I believe it's 25 weeks. That's a long time. Pastor has been dealing with love for 25 weeks. And I tell you, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you have learned nothing else by now, I hope and pray you have learned how to love. How many have learned how to love? Okay, for all of you who haven't, we'll be working on you some more today. So by the end of this message, you will have learned how to love. You know, I was looking in the world's, um, the Guinness Book of World Records. And you know, every now and then I like to look in there and see what kind of things, when people have reached certain uh, records, then they put them in the Guinness Books. And their records like a uh, person was cycling backwards while playing a violin for 37 miles. Now that's in the Guinness books. And then there were those that had, uh, somebody grew a giant vegetable, 19 pound carrot, 42 pound beet. That's big. But it's so exceptional that they put it in the Guinness book of world records. And then I was reading just recently and one of the records that was recorded was the shortest sermon ever preached. I thought that was, well, I got to look at this. This is interesting. The people of God may want to hear the shortest sermon ever preached. How many of y'all can stand the shortest sermon ever preached every now and then? Don't raise your hand. I'm going to tell pastor. Put them on tape. Let's see all of them. But there was a preacher who preached. Uh, he was a, a priest out of Michigan. And uh, he went up to give his sermon. And he stood in the pulpit to preach. And he stood there and he paused for a moment. And he said, love and he sat down they recorded that in the guinness book of royal records because that's the shortest sermon ever preached well i cannot promise you i know some of y'all are saying she's just gonna say love and sit down give jesus a hand clap for your thoughts this morning but that's not what i'm gonna do that was the shortest sermon ever preached and i think that was worth being in the Get us book of real records, but if people really understood what the man said in one word, if God could give us one word, one word that he wants us to remember from him and from the word, that word would be love. It is such a small word with such a big meaning. So the topic I chose for this morning is what's love got to do with it? 
I see some of y'all's face just lit right up when I said, what's love got to do with it? You are a bit more thinking about the word. We thinking about Tina Turner. Tina Turner got a song out that says, what's love got to do, got to do with it? Y'all know y'all know that song? How many of y'all saw the movie? It is amazing how we can listen to folk that don't have a clue. Tina Turner had no clue about what love's got to do with it. Number one, she was abused as a child. Number two, she got married and was abused. How can she tell us what love's got to do with it? God has commanded us to love. What's love got to do with it? I'm telling you, God's love has to do with everything. A lot of us, the reason we're off track is because we're looking for love in all the wrong places. Ooh, boy, I don't know if I need to sit down and preach this one or what. But a lot of us looking everywhere for love, up and down, in and out. We're in with this one, out with that one. We dated this one last month. We're dating another one this month. Six months ago, we were with three others over there. And we're looking for love in all the wrong places. It is amazing how particularly females get involved with males just looking for somebody to love them. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves, and I don't think I ever said this, or maybe I did, but one of my biggest pet peeves is fathers who do not take care of their children. Particularly fathers who have nothing to do with their daughters. The reason I always go off on that is because daughters need their fathers. We have a lot of women looking for love in all the wrong places because daddy was never there. And everybody talk about fathers and sons and it's beautiful and it's wonderful and I think fathers should be with sons. Everybody thinks that fathers just need to be with sons. Daughters really need their dads. I'm telling you, I do teens and I talk to teens all of the time. And one of the biggest areas, one of the biggest areas that I have to deal with is fathers that are not there. Because it's something in a female, we love to hear that we look good. How many of y'all love to hear y'all look good? There's something in humans, we love to feel loved. Anybody in here that don't want to feel any love? Did everybody in here feel love this morning? That is important. Is there anybody in here that didn't get any love this morning? Because if you are in here, I need to give you some love right now. Anybody didn't get any love this morning? Love is so important. We thrive on love. We want love. Love is what we want. And because when a female growing up does not hear daddy say, look at daddy's little princess, look at that dress, that's so cute, you are daddy's baby, you are so pretty, look at you, dad. See, that's what a female needs to hear when she's young. So when she gets 15, when loose lip Billy comes by, and tells her she looks good, she doesn't get excited. She's going to say, oh, my daddy already told me that. My daddy tells me that all the time. <laughs> Men need to hold up a standard for their girls. Men are the ones that need to buy their daughters dresses and purses. And make their daughters look beautiful. And give their daughters a ring so they're not excited about a ring from a young man. What's love got to do with it? I'm telling you, men really need to step up when it comes to their girls. Because girls want, it's something about being a female, period. We just love the perfumes. We just love the makeup. We just love, even when we're small, we play with mommy's shoes. 
Because we just, it's just in us. We just love that. And when dad is not there, that is a part that is lacking from a little girl's life. There is a yearning and a burning and a void that God has put down on the inside of each one of us. Every one of us has a yearning, a burning, and a void. A lot of us have tried to fill that void with a man we can see. But God wants you to replace the man you can see for the man you can't see. We get so caught up in this thing called love because love has become, it has, be, it has been down to, the Bible says that God is love. That's how the Bible defines love. When somebody asks you what's love, give them the biblical definition. God is love. Now Webster, Mr. Webster, I believe Webster saved. I think he got saved one year there sometime when he was writing a dictionary. But Mr. Webster defines it, it's an affection. See, what people think is love is something you turn on and something you turn off. If God is love, when you give your life to God, guess what? You are love. See, I got a list here of things that I feel that we need love in order to handle. Now, y'all, when y'all recognize one for you, just shout out. You need love to handle irresponsible family members. Oh, somebody got that. You need love to handle touchy fellow workers. Y'all know some of the worst mess go on in the workplace. She's talking about me. I heard her say, why is she looking at me funny? Some of the worst junk goes on in the office. You need love to handle unreasonable bosses. Now, no employee of Speak the Word need to raise their hand. We will be dealt with at the end of this service. You need love to handle cranky neighbors. Any of y'all ever had any cranky neighbors? I don't know about y'all, but I had some cranky neighbors, some folk that I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the love of God, if it wasn't for God's almighty love, on top of God's almighty love, on top of God's almighty love, I'm telling you, some folk can just rub you wrong. How many of y'all know that? Some folk, it's like, it's like some people just have a personality you can, everybody can get along with. And then there are other folks that got a personality like nobody can get along with them. Everywhere they go, they just walk in and people say, mm, something about her just rubs me wrong. Oh, let me go on my list. No, 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 let me get off track. We need love to handle harsh teachers. We got some pretty rough teachers out there. Jendai got her hand up, but uh, we, we don't even see her hand. We ain't recognizing her hand at all. Um, we need love to handle disrespectful teachers. We need love to handle snooty salespeople. How many of y'all can uh, be a witness to snooty salespeople? I have never seen so many snooty sales folks. You walk in the store, they got a bell on the door. When you walk in, the bell rings, ding, 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 ding. You walk in, you can't find them. Hello? 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 They finally come out. What do you want? It's like, why are you bothering me? I was in the back on my cell phone. I don't know what you're messing with me for. Snooty salespeople. They don't want to help you. And the thing that we got to remember, sales folks, it's because of the people that come in as customers that you have a job. If the customer does not come in, you have no job. Make the connection, please. We need 
love to handle complaining customers. That's the other side of the fence. Sometimes I'm in line and I say, boy, these folks are still sure waiting on people and they're slow. But sometimes I don't realize some of the customers are rude. My God, I tell you, I have been around some folk. <sighs> Let me just move on because I, 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 sometimes I do not understand how you can be helping somebody and that person can be upset with you. I mean, just mean, just ugly, just rude, don't want you there in the business, and the business is there. I mean, I have never, I've gone into places that are supposed to close at 9. Just the other day, I walked in a place. It was 8.15. 8.15, they closed at 9. I walked in there, and I said, uh, Miss, uh, could I get some food? I want to order some food. She said, uh, do you see the time? And I thought, wow, it must be 9 o'clock. So I looked and I said, uh, I said, what time do you have? She said, I have 8.15. I said, okay, 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 8.15. I said, what time do you close? She said, 9 o'clock. <laughs> now, I know I'm not one of, I may not be the smartest person in the world. But I do realize that 8.15 and 9 o'clock, there are 45 minutes left. How many of y'all realize that? So I said to the lady, I said, uh, Miss, according to my watch, it's 8.15. She said, according to my clock, it's 8.15. I said, but you don't close till 9 o'clock. We're getting ready to close. I said, but I don't understand. She said, you don't have to understand. We're locking the door. <laughs> rude, rude, rude. We, see, I need love for them kind of folks. Because I'm there to help you. I come in to give you my money, and in essence, you saying, I don't want your money. Get up on out of here. I don't want your money. So it takes the love of God. I have to start speaking in tongues. I mean, just when I'm there, one of them 25 messages that pastor preaches come to my head, and all of a sudden, I start thinking, Pastor Terry, calm down, because right behind you may be a Speak the Word member. You never know who's standing right behind you or who's right in the store and you don't see them, but they see you. So I have to remember my love walk during these situations. Another thing that we need love to handle is aggressive drivers. How many of y'all see those aggressive drivers? They pull in, they pull out. They almost make you hit them. They make you put you on your brakes all of a sudden. Just aggressive. And they get mad with you for driving correctly. <clears throat> I'm not saying how many uh, aggressive drivers I've seen leaving the parking lot and speak the word. But we're going to pray for y'all. You need love to handle self-important officers. Self-important offices. You know, some people are too important for themselves. My God, don't let them get a certificate. Don't let them get a certificate. Oh, my goodness, you have just, oh, you, you give them a job with a certificate? They are rude, rude, rude. Rude. There are some people who think they're bigger than God. And don't let them have a bachelor's degree. Oh, my God in heaven, everybody else is beneath them. You just don't understand because you don't have what I had. And it takes the love of God to walk into some people's offices and know that because they got a piece of paper and they know they have control over a situation, they're really rude. How many of y'all seen that before? Just rude, just rude, just rude to be rude. Now, I got a story here that I think is a very interesting story, which I think demonstrates love. And I think it was important enough for me to, to bring this so that you could hear it. This is about a young man, and the young man is Ted. And Ted was uh, in school, and Ted was having some serious problems. Um, he dressed sloppily when he came to school. He was... Uh, expressionless, 
unattractive. And uh, the teacher got tired of it. And so he kept getting, all of his grades were horrible grades. And um, so one day the teacher wrote a note and she wrote a little note and she said, well, in the first grade, she was telling a social worker about this, said in the first grade, Ted showed promise with his work and attitude, but he has a poor home situation. Second grade, she wrote, Ted could do better. His mother is seriously ill, receives little help from home. Third grade, she said, Ted is a good boy, but he's too serious. He's a slow learner. His mother died this year. Fourth grade, she said, Ted is very slow, but well behaved. His father shows no interest whatsoever. So Christmas arrives in this teacher's classroom with Ted. And the children come in with their wrapped gifts. And Ted brought one for the teacher, and it was wrapped in brown paper. And it was put together with scotch tape. And Miss Thompson, who was the teacher, she opened up the gift. And all the children are crowded around to watch. And out of Ted's package fell a gaudy rhinestone bracelet with half of the stones missing and a bottle of cheap perfume. All the children started laughing because of what Ted had brought. But the teacher silenced them. And she sprayed a little of the perfume on and she put the bracelet on her arm. And at days in after the children had left, Ted came by the teacher's desk and he told her how good she smelled. He said, you smell just like my mom used to smell. And he told her how pretty the bracelet looked. He said, I'm glad you like my present. And Miss Thompson, after he finished, she got down on her knees and she prayed to God and asked God to forgive her for the attitude she had when she saw the gift. And she said, God, I need you to change my attitude. So the next day, the children were greeted by a teacher who had already prayed to God. And, and she committed herself to loving each one of the children for what they had given. And she decided that day that she was going to pay special attention to Ted, who was categorized as a slow boy. And Ted began to show great improvement. He actually caught up with most of the students and even passed a few. Time came and went and Miss Thompson heard nothing from Ted. He left her class and for a long time. Then one day she receives a note and it said, Dear Miss Thompson, I wanted you be the, to be the first to know I will be graduating second in my class. Love, Ted. Then four years later, another note came. It said, Dear Miss Thompson, they told me I will be graduating first in my class. I wanted you to be the first to know the university has not been easy, but I liked it. Love, Ted. Four years later, Dear Miss Thompson, as of today, I am Ted Stallard, MD. How about that? I wanted you to be the first to know I'm getting married next month, the 27th to be exact, and I want you to come and sit where my mother would sit if she were alive. You're the only one now. Dad passed last year. Miss Thompson attended the wedding and sat there where Ted's mother would have been. The compassion she has shown the young man entitled her to that privilege. This is an amazing story because... A lot of times we give up on children that people say are slow. There are some people that people have counted out. There are some children that a teacher will tell you, don't, don't, even, don't even think about him because he's not going to make it anyway. He's going to be one of the statistics that doesn't make it. But this teacher, because she had love, see, that's what we're talking about this morning. Love entitles you to go a step ahead of everybody else. It's the love that you show to somebody who may be the person who is unlovable. Because I'm telling you, there are students that come to school and go to school every day that seem to be unlovable. And nobody wants them in their classroom. Nobody wants to spend time with them. 
But because of the folks that speak the word ministries, who have been through 26 weeks of a love theme, we know that we need to love folks that are unlovable. And a lot of times what we... God bless you. What an awesome word. I'm so glad you were able to join us today for this message. What's love got to do with it? I tell you, love has everything to do with it. I'm so excited that I didn't focus on the prodigal son, but I focused on the father. And the father of the prodigal son who was so loving and so kind and saw the far, the son from afar off and hugged him and ran to meet him. And that's the way love should be. I tell you, love today can bring your son back home. Love can cause your loved one to be saved. And this is what I want you to do on this week. I just want you to pray, God, show me, teach me how to love. I want to love like you love. Because the Bible says God is love. And I want to pray over you today. I want to pray that the love of God will permeate in your heart, will radiate in your mind like never before. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, I thank you this day for your love. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. You love us so much. Teach us how to love today like you love. Father, I thank you that even now as I pray, somebody's son is coming home because of their love. Somebody's wife is being saved. Somebody's husband is coming to know you the more as a result of love. And Father, I thank you. Let your love radiate on us. And Father, we thank you for those that would like to be saved. We pray over them now in the name of Jesus. Father, let them give their lives over to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, thank you. We love you today. We want you to know, Pastor and myself, we love you with the love of the Lord. And continue to have a blessed week in the Lord because love has everything to do with it. Next time on the broadcast. You know, it is amazing how we just consider love at first sight. We think that all of a sudden when we see somebody, when we single, some of us, for some of us, we don't have to be single. Y'all catch that later. So maybe you go home and pray over that one. But we single and all of a sudden we see somebody and we are just love struck. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. If you would like to receive this message in its entirety, you can write to us at P.O. Box 8304, Sunny Isles, St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, 00823, or email us at speaktheword at islands.vi, or you can call us at 340-778-1575, or toll free at 866-778-1575. We truly believe that as a result of this message, you will be blessed exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you may even act or think. We are located at number 7 Peter's Rest in the Wiesner Development Complex on St. Croix, and our Sunday services begin at 7 o'clock a.m. and 9 o'clock a.m. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast, and we hope you join us next time on Word TV.